I'm Robert Hitt, one of the pottery instructors at the Virginia Beach Art Center, and I'm going to do a real simple demo on how to make uh, some tile work, whether it be a decorative tile or a wall hanging. It's something that you don't need a, a wheel or any tools other than maybe a slab of clay and a rolling pin. So let's get started. For this project, you don't need many tools. Uh, a sponge, some scissors, a sharp needle probe, a rolling pin, a piece of canvas, and I'm using a foam grout spreader, but you could use a piece of cardboard. Take a small piece of plywood and put a wooden frame around it, preferably the size of the project. To draw your project out on paper, and now roll out a slab of clay about a quarter of an inch thick using a plastic uh, card. Score over the uh, slab of clay. This compresses the clay, makes the surface a little bit smoother. Place your pattern on top of the clay slab and using a dull pencil or a wooden tool, uh, gently trace through the lines to make the marks transfer onto the clay. Try not to cut through the paper uh, pattern because you may want to reuse that for another project. So make sure that your score lines are going through uh, and show up on your clay. Once you've transferred the pattern, take a needle probe or an X-Acto knife and gently cut out each piece. Uh, turn the piece over and number it. This will be piece number one. And also put that number on the pattern as well so you know where that piece goes. Using a damp finger or a small sponge, round off the front edge of the piece. This will make the tile look a little better uh, when finished. Once we have them all made, let them dry slowly, and when available, we can fire and glaze them. To mount them onto the board, you'll need some tile adhesive. You can get this at any home center, such as Home Depot. And you spread it onto your board. I'm using a adhesive spreader, but you could use uh, any tool. On the back of each piece, I use a fork to uh, butter the back of each piece with some adhesive, and then put them in place, being careful to follow your pattern. Make sure your pieces are as level as you can make them so they're all about the same height. I put some blue tape around the border of uh, my wooden frame just to protect it from the grout. Now the grout is the fun part. It's also very messy, but it's a great thing to use. I use the charcoal gray grout. The black grout makes your tiles sort of pop. A few tablespoons of grout with a little bit of water make about the consistency of toothpaste or a little bit runnier than toothpaste would be. It's very messy, so put down some newspaper. You might want to wear rubber gloves if you're going to get this on your hands. Now this looks horrible, but you pour the black grout right over your piece once the tile grout, um, once the tiles have dried in that adhesive. And then using either a foam grout spreader like I'm using, or use a simple piece of cardboard. Cardboard's not a bad idea because you can throw it away once you finish with this rather messy project. You want to make sure that the grout goes down between all the tiles all the way down as far as it'll go. And this grout uh, will dry and harden like cement and will help hold the tiles in place as well. Uh, remove as much as you can with the uh, tile spreader or the grout spreader or a piece of cardboard. And if you have too much on there, just take it over to a waste bucket and rake it off into the waste. Now this looks really messy, but this is the best part of the whole process. Let it set for just a few minutes, uh, and then the fun part begins when you get a bucket of water and a large sponge, and you start removing gently the grout uh, from the tiles. And as you wipe, your tiles come through it begins to show up. The black grout makes your tiles look so much better and the product really looks quite different. And again, this is messy, but all it takes is a lot of water, a lot of sponge wiping, but you wipe this uh, surface free and you have this uh, great looking project. And you can see how it looks so much better with the black grout around the edges. This really makes the uh, 
the piece pop and look finished. So the final product looks really good with the black grout. Uh, it hides what little imperfections may be in it and it also gives you a final product. When this is a little drier I'll do another clean wipe on it and then I'll peel the paper off which reveals the edge of the frame around it. When you think you're competent enough to uh, do something bigger then you can turn in a larger table. And This is a, uh, a small table that'll fit on a wrought iron base, but it's all made exactly the same way as the simple tile work we just did. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you'll get busy and do some simple tile design in your own, and let me know how it turns out. This is Robert Hill. Thought you might like to see a quick tour of my studio. Located in Kempsville section of Virginia Beach, the studio's in my backyard. It's not a big studio, uh, it's nice that it faces south with all these glass walls. So on a sunny day in the winter, it's pretty comfortable inside. Most studios probably look as cluttered as mine. Maybe mine's a little worse. I find that creative people are very often not very neat. <laughs> but uh, this is a great workspace. I have a brick floor. I don't have to worry about water or mud on the floor. Uh, I have a sink. I have a slab roller. I have a wheel. I keep my glaze in five gallon buckets and I try to limit my glaze palette. I have a large widescreen television, that's a necessity for uh, any workshop. I recently installed a heater, uh, although I don't use it very much because on a sunny day the studio gets quite warm. Just outside of the uh, studio workspace there is a, another section of my building where I keep the uh, plastic tubs full of pottery that's finished and is sorted out into bowls and those kinds of things that I might take to a show. It's a small workspace, but it's a lot of fun. It allows me to go out there anytime and work with pottery. Hope you enjoyed the tour.